<clears throat> Not that much to go. So, okay. Um, I'm going to be done with optimization problems um, and move on to section 4.8, which is Newton's method. So what is Newton's method? It's a, it's a way to guess the solution to equations. Um, so I already talked a bit about this one right after the intermediate value theorem. Um, so solving equations is very hard or mostly impossible. So when you play an equation, I mean something like this. <clears throat> You have something, you have some expression in terms of x and you want to make it zero or you want to make two things equal and you want to find which x's make that equal. Um, so one way you, the way you've always known it is to isolate x. Um, this can be, this can be, very difficult or impossible. Like the equation I just wrote. I already went through this, um, or either either this or a very similar one. You're not gonna be able to isolate X there. You take logarithms, logarithm does nothing good with sums. It's just um It's just bad. Um, another way is to use the intermediate value theorem. So this was where you went. Um, basically, it was guessing higher or lower. And today I'm going to talk about Newton's method, which is, um, which if it works, is much, much faster than the intermediate value theorem because you're not guessing. I mean, you're guessing, but you're making a very, very good guess. So, what is Newton's method? Um, Newton's method, I have this function which has a solution. Um, so I'm trying to find the point. A function is zero. I'm trying to find this x. And I take what I do. Maybe I shouldn't have drawn this actually. What I do like when like what I did before is take a guess and then based on that guess take uh, try to make it into a better guess. So um so you take a guess and let's write it over here and call it x zero. So then you have, well, you can compute the function there and you have f of x zero is not gonna be zero. If it is, you're, you want already, you're done. So then how can you improve this? Um, like for example, how would you know if you wanna go higher or lower? Um, well, one way is to use the derivative. Like for example, here, even if I, even if I only knew what was happening inside the circle, I know the function is positive, so I, I need the function to be smaller, and I know it's increasing. So 
I, I, I know I'm, I'm going to have to go to the left. So the question is, how much to the left? So what you can do, uh, of course, I'm drawing it, but you don't have to draw in practice. You draw the tangent line. Um, and then this you get a new point here and that's your and that's a new guess and and it's getting closer to a solution and in fact uh well it's it's closer uh let me because i guess i haven't gotten to the next step um fine uh and you guess by finding the x axis in the intersection of the x axis with the tangent line. And then you have a new guess. Um, what you can do is repeat. So now I, I have a guess here. I can go look over here. I go, okay, this is not the solution. What if I draw the tangent line and do a new intercept? And then if you, well, in this picture, it already is starting to get too close for me to really draw. Um, and often you repeat this four or five times, which of course you're not gonna repeat. You're not gonna make any pictures. You're just gonna plug everything into a calculator or even better a computer program to just do it over and over for you. Um, and it works. So if you ask a calculator to solve an equation, the kind of equation that you wouldn't know how to solve algebraically, this is probably what it's doing. Um, it has so um, it needs the this needs the function to be differentiable, and it might not work even even if it is differentiable. For example, if you take a very bad initial guess, uh, you might get unlucky. You might not. This might not get closer to the solution, but if it works, uh, it's way faster. So, um, are there any questions? Before I tell you how to actually do this. So like basically it's just another form of approximation. Yeah. Like an... So is this like typically whenever we have multiple of the same like variables in an expression? Uh, oof. I don't know what to do with multiple variables. Um, it's when you have an equation that you don't know how to solve. Um, like this one, if you, how would you solve this equation? Um, I don't really have any good way of solving it except for taking a guess. You know, maybe drawing a graph and try to see where it intersects the um, the axis. But if I wanted to know like six decimals, that the graph wouldn't give me that. So, like in that situation, uh, you would just like take an x where you think, like take a value of x where you think it would equal zero, and then like take the tangent line. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. And then just like keep getting closer and closer with that. Yeah, until I get bored. Okay. Okay, let's let's do it. So um so let's guess um let's take a very bad guess. Let's guess x equals zero. I know this doesn't work. Um e to the zero, so let's call this f of x. f of zero is e to the zero plus zero, which is not zero, definitely. So this is not the solution. Um, so what I'm supposed to do now, so let me just, um, figure out what the formula is. So if you have an X here, 
and you draw the tangent line. Maybe let's call this x0, x1. There's a right triangle here. And well, I can I can just use that triangle. So I would like to figure out the red segment. And how can I do that? Well, I know what the, so this point, I know it's coordinates, it's on the graph. So say I know I have x0. I want x1. So since this is on the graph, these are the coordinates. And now I have, so this, I know what this segment is. Um, the vertical distance between the point x0 comma 0 and x0 f of x0. Well, that's just f of x0. So if I draw this triangle, this side has length f of x0. And the blue side, I don't really care. Uh, but the red side, if this has x coordinate x0, and this has y coordinate x1, which is what I'm trying to find, what is the length of the red side? What is this length? Is it X? Um. I was going to say, is it x1 minus x0? Um, I think it's the other way around. Because x, the way I drew it, x0 is bigger. So I think this is x0 minus x1. If, if x0, so for example, if this was three and this was one, this would be two, not negative two. Okay, I think I drew this too big. Um, X0 is to the right, so it's um, the way I drew it, X0 is bigger. So I, if I want to subtract them and get a positive number, I should get, um, I should do X0 minus X1. Though this, if you, if you draw the picture going the other way, you'll see in the end, we're going to get the same formula. So um, I want to find the red side because I don't know what X1 is. Um, and I have this triangle. And well, I know the I know the slope of the um, of the blue line because it's the it's the derivative. The slope of the blue line in this triangle, it's the opposite over the adjacent. And this is f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1. So now I'm left with a formula. And the thing is, I, all I need is this formula. I don't need to draw this picture every single time. 
I just need to look at this formula or even better um, solve for x1. So let's solve for x1. Um, since I can, I can definitely do this here. So solving for x1, I should multiply with the denominator and divide by this derivative on the other side. Um, and then to put to get x1 by itself, I should just write x0. Oh. I'm copying it wrong. It's x x zero minus x one. So I should move x one over to the other side. And here I'm gonna get x zero minus f of x zero divided by f prime of x zero. So all there is to Newton's method is to take that expression over there and plug in x0 and to get a new guess. So you never need to draw any pictures. You never need to even think of how to do this. Just take this formula. Um, just take this formula. So um, if I took so I took a guess of x0 equal to, equals to 0. And let's see, um, the function was e to the x plus x. So its derivative is going to be e to the x plus 1. So f of x0, I could even make a little table probably. I could write here f of x, f prime of x. And in the end, finish with x minus f divided by f prime, which is my new guess. So I start with x equals 0. The function at x equals 0 is 1. I already uh, computed that. And the derivative is two because it's um, t to the zero plus one. So when I divide them, I divide f by f prime, I get one half. So x minus f divided by f prime is zero minus one half, which is negative one half. So hopefully I'm, I'm closer. And now I do this again, negative one half. So the function and negative one half. Now at this point, I just take a calculator. Um, negative one half plus e to the negative one half. Point one zero seven. So you can see here, it's it's already. I went from getting f equals one to f equals point one. I'm getting pretty close to zero already. Um, the derivative, so wait, the, the thing I put into the calculator was negative one half plus e to the negative one half. Here I need to do e to the negative one half plus one. So let's just do that. 1.0. Um, I'm just going to not share the calculator since you know how to use a calculator. Uh, next step, I need to divide them. So I need to divide f by f prime. So I need to do 0 0.107 divided by 1 divided 1 1.607. And that is uh, 0 0.107. 
0.0666. Venga, no tengo un sistema muy desde hace mucho tiempo. Um, my... my new guess is going to be um, negative one half minus 0 0.067. And that is um, what am I using a calculator for this? Negative zero point five six seven. And now I would say zero point five six seven. Of course, in real life, you say you sell a computer, just repeat this over and over. You make a spreadsheet or something. You're not going to uh, use negative 0 0.567? Oh, thank you, Sydney. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I think I would have noticed when I, I don't get nowhere near a solution now. So now the function is negative 0 0.567 minus e to the negative 0 0.567. Plug that into the equation. Um, Sorry, plus. Oh. And at this point, at this point, you get, uh, if you put it into a calculator, you get zero point yeah, zero 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 two two. Two to five. So we've gotten from being one of to being point one of to being um, a fifth of a thousandth of. This goes really fast. Um, I'm gonna stop there because and this probably corrects us three decimals. Let's see. Let's see how correct it is. Um, does Google solve an will Google solve an equation for it? <laughs> w W of one. What the hell? Oh, wait, here. Zero point five six seven. I got three decimals. Um Writing like four things into the calculator. I don't know if you're appreciating how fast this is, but it's kind of crazy. Um, and that's it, that's Newton's method. Um, you could, for example, if you wanted to do it. So this is not, I mean, this is not a very central part of the course. Like it's sort of a very important thing in some other areas of life. Um, but I'm not gonna use Newton's method for anything. Uh, but if you wanted to do it, you could just write this table, write it in a spreadsheet. And and then in a spreadsheet, you can just copy and paste a thousand rows. And you could do it. Uh, if you do a thousand computations of this, you're probably going to get like 2,000 decimals. Uh, correct. And you never need 2,000 decimals for anything. You need more like do this four times, and then you get eight decimals. And that's good enough for everything in practice. Um, maybe I'll draw a picture of what we just, what we just did. Um, so we were trying to find the solution. Um, we're trying to find this point here. So what I did was I took the point zero one in there. Um, is the point x f of x. So I start with, I guess, x. And then, um, no, let's make it uh, point c. So I have a point on there. And then I draw the I do the tangent line, so you can 
uh, you know the equation for Italian line is the linear approximation also it's f of f at the point plus the derivative times x minus the point and there's a tangent line so then well the next case is going to be this point over here uh and i i know um i know a formula for this we'll call it um let's call it x1 x1 is um c minus the function divided by the derivative it's not even i mean you could memorize this but if i wouldn't if i were you because it's not that important it's not that important uh a formula you could always just look it up um but you wouldn't need to draw any pictures again you just memorize this formula and look it up um and there you get your new guess um There's um, this is what we just said. <clears throat> and you can see if I start, so my first guess is uh, zero. If I start moving it uh, close to, so the next step will be make it negative 0 0.5. If I make it negative 0 0.5, then the new gas is negative 566. Um, and, and it just gets really stupidly close to the actual solution. Like it's not actually the correct solution, but it's very close. So if then I get, if I make this negative 5663, now, the new guess, I mean, it's again, I don't think I'm going to be able to separate them. Oh, yeah. But this is the point where it doesn't even, I mean, the, the drawing doesn't even distinguish the, um, the, the, four, the decimals. It's all the same up to four decimals. And if I do five, six, seven, one, uh oh that's not even so that's not even what i had before i had someone before i think at this point at this point it's going to be beyond the scope of what this can zoom in so four guesses it's all it takes um and now it take five minutes to zoom out because we got so close So Nina's method is really good. It has a chance of not working, but if it works, it's just, it's a super easy way to approximate a solution to an equation. Um, if I try to draw all the steps, all the tangent lines, so now I draw the tangent line at here, I get this line and now I can't, now I can't draw anymore. Now I'm already so close. All right, are there any questions? So it's really, it's just one one method to solve one problem. Um, and you want, you need to keep in mind that it, it might not work. I'll give you some web assign on that. Uh, but other than that, not much to it. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's move on to to the next chapter. Four point nine antiderivative. So, what is an antiderivative? Um, it's the opposite of a derivative. So sometimes um, we know the derivative of a function. For example, we know the speed of a thing and we and we want to find uh, 
we want to find the original function. So if I give you a function, you can find its derivative, but if I give you its derivative and you want to find, you want to undo the derivative. Um, so that we call an antiderivative because you un, un, un der, derivated, undifferentiated. You undo the thing, you go backwards. Um, so this is what an antiderivative is. It's a function that gives you um, that gives you uh, the fu any function as a derivative. So, and for example, an antiderivative of f of x equals two x is let's call it capital F. Normally we like calling antiderivatives by capital letters. So what function has two x as a derivative? X squared, thank you, Sam. Uh, so the reason, so why is why am I calling this an antiderivative? Because the derivative of x squared is two x. So really, if you know derivatives, you know antiderivatives. Um, so um, so here's another example, or the same example. What is another antiderivative of the same function? So what's a different function that has um, the same derivative, that has the derivative 2x and it's not x squared? x squared plus 1. Um, yeah, exactly. And the reason is that the derivative of x squared plus 1 is also 2x. Um, so there's no, it doesn't make any sense to say the antiderivative of, of a function because there, there could be more than one answer. Uh, or maybe there's always more than one answer. So how many answers are there? So um, the next question is, what do all the antiderivatives look like? How would you tell me every single possible antiderivative of 2x? I mean, maybe there's only two of them. Maybe there's only the two that Sam and Shelby gave. Could it be 2x plus or minus any real number? You mean x squared, um, but yeah. Yeah, uh, so basically it's x squared plus a number. Because you add, because the thing is, if you if you add any number to a function, a constant, um, the derivative is zero, so it doesn't change the derivative at all. All right. Um, so basically, if you find any antiderivative, you add, add three to it, you get another antiderivative. So um, we tend to write this. We like to call this number c because it's a constant. Um, X squared plus any constant. And then you make C anything, you get an antiderivative. And also we, we've seen that uh, the intermediate value theorem tells us 
that these are all of them. Um, if you have two derivatives with the same function, two fu blah, 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 two functions that have the same derivative, um, if um, if two functions have the same derivative, this means that you subtract them and you get derivative zero and the intermediate, uh, the, the, the mean value theorem told us that this means that this is a constant. So one is a constant plus the other. So these are all of them. Um, <clears throat> so we tend to say that um, well, you probably say the, even though there's not one, there's infinitely many anti-derivative of um, of two x is um, is x squared plus c where we mean that c i mean you write the capital c everyone tends to understand that you mean that could be any number and and you know that any number you plug in you're going to get the same derivative because you're just adding a number that doesn't change the derivative um <clears throat> and then what really happens in practice is that we forget the c all the time um and normally it doesn't really matter because in, re in reality, we know that it should be there. And even if we forget to write it, fine. Um, some Calc 1 professors love to take up points for this, but I feel more solidarity since I forget it all, all the time as well. <clears throat> but keep that in mind because you might get points off in Calc 2. So, um, so what is um, the antiderivative? So more examples. The antiderivative of x cubed minus x squared plus one. Any guesses? What function will give you that derivative? What function gives you the derivative x cubed? Is it one fourth x to the fourth? It is, is it yeah. Not? So if you if you guess as x to the fourth, which I think is a pretty good guess, you will see that you get four x cubed. So you have an extra four. Uh, so how about I get rid of that extra four by dividing by it? This is the same as the, um, a multiplying constant comes out of a derivative. So this is the same as one fourth times four x cubed. So to get x cubed, I need to do x to the fourth divided by four. What do I need to do to get x squared? 
x to the third divided by three. All right, thank you, Shelby. Yeah, and how do I get it? One. X. X. So um, this is an antiderivative. Um, and I guess if you wanted all of them, I would add any constant you want. And it's very easy. It's it's a lot easier to check that you have an antiderivative than to find it. Um, so far, we have one way of finding an antiderivative, which is guessing. But if you guess and you guess correctly, then you can take the derivative of of capital F. And if you get the original function, then you're good. So this is, I mean, this is all it means to have an antiderivative. Plus one. So the so another example. So what is the antiderivative? of sine negative cosine negative cosine because um because you remember that the derivative of cosine is negative sine so if I wanted to get sine instead, uh, take negative cosine and add 13 and a half to it, if you please. Um, what is the antiderivative of e to the x? E to the x plus c, there you go. Um, so what's the takeaway here? If you know a derivative, you know an antiderivative. Um, that's it. Um, so take the, um, take, uh, well, the, take any table of derivatives. And you get a table of antiderivatives as well. Maybe switch the columns or label them differently. Uh, antiderivatives. And um, I mean, you can find you can find a table like this in your book. Um, like this one. All right. Copy it, probably. There you go. So um, for every derivative you know, basically you know an antiderivative. Um, this is just a table of derivatives where you label the column derivative by into function and the, col the column function into derivative. Um, so, so this is where it doesn't synchronize. I don't see the same thing as the talent. If you call this f and you call this f prime, you get a table of derivatives. So, for example, the derivative of logarithm is one over x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of b to the x divided by logarithm is b to the x. The derivative of sine is cosine. But if you just change the labels, now this one becomes the input and this one becomes the output. There's a, there's a table of antiderivatives for you. So if you want to know an antiderivative, of of one divided by one plus x squared, you can look in here and see that it's arctangent. And they didn't bother writing the plus C here. They just wrote particular antiderivative to mean that they are only writing one example of antiderivative. 
you wanted to know the antiderivative of secant squared, well, it's tangent because it's on the table. Now, the big problem with this is that the right, the right column contains a lot of functions that you could think of. And basically, basically you know how to take every derivative. Um, maybe you haven't realized this yet, but you know how to take every derivative, um, putting together all the rules you know. Um, and you don't know how to take every antiderivative. For example, secant squared is in the table, but uh, what about secant? What function has derivative secant? Um, this would be, this is something you learn in Calc 2, how to find the function, but I could give it to you right now. Uh, and you could check that it's the antiderivatives. The thing is, how did you find it? Calc 2 is all about finding antiderivatives, uh, like 60% of, of it. Um, so, um, let me just say, Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of functions that you're just not gonna guess the antiderivative of. It's just it would be incredibly, incredibly lucky, basically. Um, secant um, is one of the worst offenders. Because um, I mean, if you if you if you guess this, and I'm just incredibly impressed. Um, it's the logarithm of the secant plus the tangent. And if I give you the answer, you can take the derivative of the logarithm of the secant plus the tangent, and you will see, I mean, oof, did I get this right? I'm second guessing myself. I'm pretty sure, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure I got it right. Uh, you will see that the derivative of this thing is secant, but how did you come up with it? Um, I'm not going to answer that question. <clears throat> but I just want to note that a table is not enough. But it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter for now. I just want us to know what, what an antiderivative is and what it's good for. So here's an example of a problem. Um, an object has speed. Um, the speed is going to depend on time. So this function is increasing at, at t equals zero. It's going at three meters per second. T equals one. It's going at seven. Um, and it's um. It's moved um, three meters after one second. Um, where is it after two seconds? Well, what you got to do to solve this problem is you know the speed of the of the thing. Um, you want to know the the displacement, so if you call f of t the distance traveled, this means that the derivative is the velocity, so you know the derivative. So the function, if I know the derivative is 4t plus 3, the original function uh, it's an antiderivative, and I know how to do an antiderivative of this function just by guessing 2t squared plus 3t plus a constant. Um, so what is this constant? I'm going to use one more minute. Um, so there's a lot of possible f's. Um, but there's only one 
for which um, f of 1 equals 3. So after one second, I move 3 meters. So that means that 3 is f of 1, which is 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus c. So 3 is 5 plus c. So c is negative 2. And this means that f of t, out of all the antiderivatives, I know which one it is if you told me where the thing started or where it was at a particular moment. And that is a an, an, an little example of a thing you can do with antiderivatives that you could probably have done if I hadn't told you the word antiderivative either way. Anyway, that's it. Uh, tomorrow we will start uh, chapter five, which is very exciting. Um, and now it's my office.